15th. So, so, so consider this like my very first talk as an official employee. I still, I haven't been informed of what I can and can't say. So we're just going to assume that, that I'm working within the bounds of, of the company. Um, I, uh, I work on the uh, Open Badges project for the foundation, the uh, URL of which is at the bottom. My fancy Twitter account is there. I mostly tweet about kites. Um, so this is the agenda. So I, I will do a quick intro of myself and the project and also the foundation because I think sometimes people don't understand what the foundation is versus the corporation. Um, and then the bulk of my talk is represented in, in these three uh, blog posts that I've written over the last couple uh, weeks. Uh, I, although I'm uh, only a recently minted employee, I've been working on the project for the last three months and I've been actively blogging about it. Uh, my role on the team, here I'll show you my, my awesome picture. Oh yeah, and, and just as a, an FYI, we're going to be looking at about like a quarter of the talk is code, half the talk is just sort of fluffy things, um, a very small percentage will be swears, there'll be a few kid pictures and then some time for questions. Also this template is provided by Microsoft PowerPoint if you're wondering how I was so stylish. Uh, this is me. That's my son. My son uses uh, inappropriate finger to point at things that he thinks are cool. <laughs> um, uh, I, yeah, like I said, I've been working on the Open Badges project for three months. I uh, I'm recently made the product lead of Open Badges, which I'll explain what that means during the course of the talk. Um, before this, I worked for Threadless for a long time. Last year, I gave a talk. I was at Threadless. I don't work there anymore. A lot less t-shirts, a lot more button-up stuff. Um, this is uh, a picture from the San Francisco office of, the Mozilla, of Mozilla, both corporation and foundation. I include it because I just want to show you guys how awesome it is. It's just a pretty picture. Um, this is... Uh, this is the lead developer on the Open Badges project. He's been with the project since the beginning. Almost every line of code was written by him. He has enormous hair. Um, he's a very smart guy. Uh, I guess, north? That's the Bay Bridge. I don't really like San Francisco. I'm going to be totally honest with everybody in the room. Like, I, it, the time that I spend there is the worst time in my life. I hate that city. We'll edit that out. <laughs> but it's, like, it's like they haven't figured out how to run a city. It's like I come back to Chicago and I'm like, thank you very much for being more awesome at urban planning than anywhere else in, in the world. Um, anyways, Mozilla. Um, uh, this is the team that's building open badges in, uh, in convenient drawn form on a big thing. And this is the project that we're working on, uh, Mozilla Open Badges. So... I did want to talk about the foundation. Does everybody know that, that there is like a Mozilla Corporation and a Mozilla Foundation? Like from a marketing perspective, we're all Mozilla. But the foundation is a relatively new entity. I mean, it's actually an old entity. It's been around since the beginning of the foundation. But in the last, or in the beginning of Mozilla. But within the last year, the foundation has really emerged as this like um, open web advocacy group. So we do a lot of um, projects, we do produce code, but the majority of what we produce is sort of like talking about how the world should be, right? And, and trying to, to stem the flow of, of what I think everybody in the room agrees is like this move towards a very closed world, both uh, in software form and also in implementation of web things form, right? So that's what the foundation is. It's part of the reason why I was excited to join them. Um, and this uh, badges project is a direct result of that sort of ethical view of the world, right? Um, and we'll talk about that. So what are badges? Um, these are Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts earn merit badges. Turns out that as condescending as it is to say that badges are just like merit badges, they are totally just like merit badges. Um, so, I mean, who here has earned a badge on a website, right? Yeah, you all have, come on. 
I, I know not many people will admit to playing World of Warcraft if the last talk was a thing, but like the whole World of Warcraft like spell system, you're all earning badges. Like there's badges everywhere, okay? I mean, a badge at, at its most pure form is really just a signifier that says you have achieved something. You have either learned something um, or uh, you're capable of doing something or in some cases you're just awesome, right? Like, I mean, a badge is as much... It, just a button that says, I did this, as anything else. And also, this talk is going to be a little bit weird because I just realized, like, I don't remember what slide is coming up next. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we'll see. Some, sometimes it'll be really smooth, like, or just a button that says, you're awesome. And then I hit the button, and it clicks to an, uh, an awesome button. Other times, I, like, I don't know what's coming up next. Oh, yeah. Hey. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> So, th so this, this character will be coming up several times in the talk to remind me that what I'm talking about is genuinely boring. And then in each transition, I'll try to spice it up by talking a little bit more about other things. So yeah, badges, Boy Scouts, merit badges. Um, when I started with the project, I thought like, oh, well, you know, I don't exactly know what they're working on. I get the concept of badges. I've been exposed to what I would consider um, badging systems that are pushing people towards like retail decisions or like trying to make them better meet targets for marketing. Um, but these guys are, are trying to do something that's more educational based and I thought that was good. But I had no idea like the level of, of um, involvement with by very large well-meaning companies until I went to this um, conference in uh, California a couple weeks ago called the DML conference. It's a digital, digital media and learning that was backed by um, the MacArthur Foundation, the Mozilla Foundation, a, uh, a nonprofit called Haystack, a bunch of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, like all these like big money players were involved. Um, and they were all specifically trying to figure out how to in, in, encourage a badge ecosystem that, um, that uh, promotes lifelong learning rather than promoting everybody just being a tool you know, for the multinational conglomerates, right? Um, and, and the conference, um, the awards thing was held here. This is the California Academy of Sciences. Has anybody ever been here? It's like the world's coolest museum. It's like 37 different museums all in one area. Um, this is not a tour group for the California Academy of Sciences, though, so we will move on. Um, right, Khan Academy. So I, a lot of big companies were sort of involved and, and part of that conference was really trying to figure out like how do we use badges effectively and there's, I think there's some positive examples no matter what you think of Khan Academy and in, and in the education world like your opinion about Khan Academy is a big deal and you sort of like feel somebody out by what they think of Khan Academy. I personally like Khan Academy. I think they have a cool badging system. Um, so they're a good example. Uh, has anybody taken any of these courses like from Stanford or U of Michigan and yeah I'm, I'm doing the model thinking one now it's really cool but Coursera is sort of like I guess I don't I, I actually don't fully understand if they're the company that's doing it or if they're just the software but they don't have badges right they you know once you complete the the course you you just have like the intrinsic motivation of having completed the course you're not actually given any sort of signifier of it um, and then, of course, MIT, uh, OpenCourseWare, I mean, you know, there's like a huge amount of stuff available from MIT. And in the next couple of months, they are going to start um, uh, badging completion of degree programs. Not degree programs, but like uh, their OpenCourseWare degree. So if you do a couple things, you'll get like some signifier that says that you did it for a small fee. So sort of like this this build up, right? Like Khan is kind of low level. You can take a couple things. Like you start getting badged right away. Khan himself is, has talked in TEDx talks or TED talks about using badges to sort of push people down these particular paths of learning um, to Coursera, which is kind of a step up, like major players getting involved. And then MIT, huge player getting involved. And they're also like fully on board with the whole badge idea. Um, and then the opposite end of the spectrum, there's folks like these guys who uh, are working at a, um, a company downtown uh, called Gravity Tank that's developing a badge. Well, they're developing like 
it's a website where um, you can learn work skills. And I'm not talking about like C++ coding skills. I'm talking about like handling money in a, in a cash register skills, right? So you sign up for it. Participating companies um, will say like, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think Chipotle is an, is an early adopter of this system. So like if um, they'll hire somebody through this system as the person like levels up in their job and learns these like real sort of basic job skills, they get, um, they get awards. They're not technically badges. I think the language is different. They're achievements or something that then uh, other employers can look at and say like, yes, this person can do these things that are, you know, it's hard to quantify if somebody can handle, like should be allowed to handle money, right? But this system sort of is building to our, towards it. And we believe that they're gonna be an early adapter or adopter of, of some of the open badges stuff. But the point is, is like there's these sort of like high level fancy schmancy folks. And then there's other people that are using the exact same tools just to, you know, help um, people that haven't in a lot of cases graduated high school work through the system and try to, you know, level up in life without sounding goofy about it. So summary, learning happen happens everywhere. Lots of badge sources. Let the users take their badges wherever. Still boring, right? <laughs> a little bit? People a little bit bored? I'm sorry. Do you want to hear a joke? <laughs> uh, this is a laundry place across the street from me that's called the D&D &D Coin Laundry. It's not really a joke, but it's a segue into my talk about D&D, because I did promise D&D. &D. Um, so a couple weeks ago, or sorry, last week, a couple days ago, actually technically several hours ago, um, uh, I wrote a blog post, because I was thinking about like this audience in particular, like you folks, like um, how can I, how can I, like, it, as, as a, a person who's been involved in the Chicago open source world for a long time, mostly in sort of the um, community group organizing aspect of things, like, how, how could I apply badges to, to things that would sort of make sense, right? So um, I came up with three sort of scenarios. One is, like, um, just a straight user group meeting. One is uh, sprints at uh, conferences. And one was uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And of those three things, like in each instance, you spend some amount of time trying to form a team, right? Like um, at the user group, like you're trying to figure out, you're trying to build like a life team. Like you're trying to meet people that um, you can help down the line, maybe hiring them at a job uh, that could help you down the line by like teaching you a new skill, contributing to a project that you're working on. Um, in a conference, in a sprint situation, like you will have three days or four days to try to get some significant amount of work done on your project, or maybe you're just trying to onboard people to your project. And uh, you have to spend some amount of time like figuring out who everybody is, what their skill level is, what they could can contribute, their areas of interest, that whole thing. And then in Dungeons and Dragons, like you're just trying to figure out like who's the fucking dwarf that you can get behind you know, that does the acts and the magic and the crap, right? Um, in those three scenarios, really the only one that's got it figured out pretty well, in my opinion, is Dungeons and Dragons. So at, at a, I do actually play, I'm not just fronting. Um, uh, at, at this uh, game place that I go to, uh, to play, like they've established this idea of, I, and it's not, it's not unique, but they, we do these little table tents that say like, your character name, your character class, um, like what your sort of role on a team is. So the point is, is that like it, it take, and also I didn't know, I don't know this guy very well. I didn't know if he wanted to be in it. So I tried to anonymize him by putting a giant pink unicorn over his face. Uh, so um, you're welcome, friend. Uh, I don't remember where I was going. Does anybody remember where I was going with that? Yeah, D&D. &D. So, um, so you spend a little bit of time. Like, then you can really get into the meat of things. You don't have to spend like 10 minutes just saying like, I'm the dwarf with the ax. Like, then you can get into all the goofy parts. Like, you know, like I was kicked out of my mountain 
clan and blah, 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 with like the fun things, right? So it's like less yakking about the BS and more hacking at the bad guys. Get it? Less yak, more hack. Um, and the same goes for, you know, a sprint situation. Like, if you can speed up the time, so like if you, the, the case that I used in the blog post was um, like Django ORM hackery. Like in the world of web development, there's the folks that can use Django and then there's the folks that can do things deep inside of Django and actually participate actively in a Django sprint. Um, but everybody sort of shows up in the same room. It'd be nice if you could figure out relatively quickly with signifiers that say like, yes, I have leveled up and I have achieved this particular thing. Um, and then the third case, like half the people in this picture are in the room right now. So um, the other case that I kind of thought of, and, and these are speculative, like these systems that I'm talking about don't actually exist. I mean, there, there's, there's moves towards um, the idea of getting badged on on coding achievements and websites like CoderWall that like read from your GitHub account and read from these other sources and determine like your level of Python mastery and a bunch of other stuff. And that's all very good. But like what Open Badges is offering is the ability to have very, very fine grained badges that like anybody in this room could implement. Okay. So the suggestion, and again it's speculative, is to say that at hackerspaces, right, there's a certain number of skills that are transferable but aren't instantly transferable. So like if you know how to use a laser cutter in Chicago, chances are, and this is a gross simplification, I'm sure that I'm probably breaking some hackerspace rule, but chances are you know how to use a laser cutter in Milwaukee. So if you can just sort of get that like level of certification without using the word certification, maybe call it a badge so that everybody likes it more than a certificate, then you can easily like transfer your skills back and forth between different places without having to go through this whole like pissing contest of I, this is the lasers that I know how to use. What kind of lasers do you have? Well, I don't know that laser. Maybe this laser, all that laser talk makes everybody sad. Yep. It's such an accusing look, isn't it? Like I, this is, like, I was having a real conversation with this guy, and he did that, and I happened to have my phone, and then I got it right at the right. It was like photojournalism to the max. And I asked him if it was okay if I used it in this talk today, and he said as long as he could use it as his Facebook thing tomorrow. So, Okay, so let's talk about, like, what it actually is. Because I, 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 I was trying to, I'm trying to set up this, like, this world in which badges are meaningful, Right? Because I think it's very easy, especially from a technical background, to think that the whole thing is kind of bullshit, right? Like, it's very easy to see it as just sort of garbage, right? But, like, I'm telling you, it's not. Ha-ha, there. <laughs> um, it's not, and, and it, takes, it takes, unfortunately, it takes more than a quick talk to sort of prove it, but like, I, I do believe that, I mean, how many, how many people in here have a degree in some sort of computer-related field, like from a higher, fuck you people. <laughs> Seriously, I learned this shit on the streets. <laughs> I did, and you know what? You know how hard it is to prove that? I have to like, it's like being in a prison yard when you take a new job. Like you have to walk in there and you got to knock down the biggest guy in the room just to prove <laughs> that like you know what you're doing, right? And there's just a huge amount of effort involved with that. And what we're saying is, is that this kind of learning happens everywhere. I mean, it's all over the website, but it's, it's the truth, right? Like you, you learn things all different places. There's a penguin in the back of the room. Um, but the... <laughs> I mean, you learn, you learn everywhere, and you should be able to, to, to benefit or profit or have a happy life based on that learning. And what we're saying is that this badge thing is happening, right? You don't want certain companies in the world to be in charge of it, and they will be in charge of it if we don't build systems like this. So for the next portion of the talk, I want to take you through the system so that I'm hoping that I'm training at least some small vanguard here to incorporate the open badges into their systems rather than the closed badges that just, again, 
allow people to be in their little matrix bubbles that power the machine, that the bugs and all that crap. So this is a this is a quick workflow of like what it's like to earn a badge. So the open badge infrastructure um, is not actually a badging system. It's just uh, it's like an open standard uh, infrastructure for um, for allowing badges to be pulled out of the silo of where they're earned and kept in a backpack and transported with you throughout your lifelong learning career. Um, so you take like a quiz. This is actually, this is something that you can do right now. You can go to uh, openbadges.org and take our goofy little quiz to earn your first badge. Uh, you answer some questions and then you're presented with like a backpack that says push badge to your backpack. And this is all obviously customizable. You do whatever you want. And then comes this sort of like big hairy white space that we're going to fix. It's kind of ugly right now, but um, you sign into your backpack uh, through Persona browser ID. Does everybody know about this project? No? It's, um, it's a, another Mozilla project, mostly driven by the corporation, uh, that's trying to do like a Facebook Connect style single sign-on, but make it federated and open, and again, not subject to the whims of, of companies that want to use you. Uh, then the thing, the badge goes into your backpack, and you can share it. Um, and we've built a displayer API that allows you to share it. It's basically a JSON API at this point. We're looking for people to build some widgets so you can incorporate it in your blog, to your online resume, your LinkedIn page, all that stuff. Um, and then the actual bits, right? Like, what is a badge? So it's, uh, it's three things. One, it's a picture. Like, it's actually a picture. It's just a ping of a badge. Uh, the only requirement is that it's square. Everybody ends up putting a circle in there because we're still stuck in the merit badge metaphor. Uh, but it is technically a square, so feel free to make it a square. Uh, just a design element. Uh, so there's a picture, and then there's this thing called a criteria URL, which, um, so openbadges.org issues a badge. We describe that badge on a page, we put it at a URL, we call that URL the criteria URL, and then that criteria URL is embedded in every badge that's issued by us, okay? So when you earn a badge, somewhere in that, the spec, which I'll talk about in a second, there's a criteria URL that points to openbadges.org. So that's how you're able to say like, yes, in fact, this badge was issued by this organization, okay? And then there's the second piece, which is the assertion URL, which is like the specific like ties the criteria URL and the picture together with your, um, your user account in, in the badge backpack. Is that clear? I know it's like such a simple thing, but for whatever reason, it always throws people off. Any questions, comments, blank stares? Yes, you in the flannel. Yeah. Right, so um, you, you don't in this case. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, it's true, false, false. Um, the quiz is super easy. But you know, but you, it's a good point. Um, so, so what we're doing, what the Open Badges project is really about is um, it's user-centric or learner-centric. Like we want, we want the learner to be able to take the badge asset out of the silo that it was created in and transport it with them and do whatever they want with it. Um, the actual, like the curriculum around the creation of the badge and protecting the assets that are involved with the badge is up to the badge issuer, right? Um, in our case, we're very liberal with the, the issuing criteria, but in, in other cases, like, it, like the MIT case, for instance, obviously like they're gonna guard it a little bit more and and what you do to actually earn the badge is kind of up to them. Like it could, there are, like in the workforce IO examples, the things that they're issuing are based on real world things that they're doing, not online quizzes. So like they, they've built a system that, um, that like uh, the learner says like I'm getting better at 
doing cash handling into their phone, into an, um, into an SMS message on their phone, and then it uh, alerts a group of mentors that have been assigned to that person, and then all of those people either say, they either confirm or deny the thing that the learner is asserting, right? Not an assertion like this, but... Um, so they've built this whole system, and then once, once everybody agrees that yes, like this is something that can be awarded to that person, then all of this machinery takes over. Um, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not, it's not enforcing any particular type of curriculum or anything like that. Um, but actually, something that we did announce this week is that um, originally we were not actually issuing the badges, uh, but we, we realized that there weren't uh, reasonable open source uh, badge issuing platforms out there, so we did just kick off a project like Wednesday called Open Badger instead of Open Badges. Um, that will be, we're trying to, we're, we're shooting to build something that's like the WordPress of badge issuing, right? So it's like easy to set up, host it if you want it to be hosted, or you can download it yourself and incorporate it into an existing site. So more, more on that in a minute. Um, so that assertion is just a, uh, it's a JSON blob. It's real simple. I mean, you can see like the top line, um, has my email address in it. Uh, as of a release that happened 45 minutes ago, we've, we've changed that to be a uh, hashed email so that we're not exposing a bunch of private information in these assertions. Um, and there's documentation on it on the site, but just for clarity's sake, it is ultimately somebody's email that's tied to a uh, browser ID uh, slash persona account. Um, that can either be hosted with Mozilla or hosted with other browser ID uh, implementations, which are starting to pop up here and there. And then basic information about the badge, like versioning, the name of it, um, the link to the uh, image, which would be hosted by the issuer. In this case, like we're hosting it on GitHub, a description, the criteria URL, which describes why you got the badge, um, and then all the sort of metadata about the issuer. And because it's all, it's all links back to the issuer, that's how you confirm that it actually came from them. Yeah. Yeah, actually, so that's on, it's on the roadmap because, um, because yes, we, we have thought about it. Like, for this initial release, we're, um, we're, we're assuming a lot of openness about it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to get into the idea of the assertions are, are uh, signed and keyed and all that jazz. Yes, Christopher. Oh, what's that? Yeah, yep, totally. We are, um, we are also actually, I mean, like, so all of the code is, is on GitHub. I'll, I'll have the links here in a second. And we are, um, we are encouraging people to host their own backpacks and their own issuers and all that jazz. Um, both like for the ability to have completely private backpacks if they want them to be private. Um, and also um, because there's a lot of rules around issuing badges to people under the age of 13 or, do, or like interacting with, with kids online. Um, so in some cases like there's a, there's a significant use case for, for doing all this stuff behind a closed door because of you want kids to be able to use it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, no. Uh, so it's not out yet, but we are moving towards. Um, okay, so right now, if you go to beta.openbadges.org, there's the Mozilla hosted backpack that you can push badges into. And, and the, the majority of, of OBI, which is Open Badges Infrastructure, OBI compliant badges are being pushed into the Mozilla hosted backpack. Um, but uh, in the next couple of iterations, we're, going, we're, we're federating the backpacks so that we'll be able to do aggregate queries across hosted backpacks in other places and you won't have to use the Mozilla backpack. Um, so we're not entirely sure how we're going to do it yet. We're, we're taking a lot of cues from uh, the browser ID persona folks. Um, but 
yeah, it's coming and it, we, we, don't, we definitely don't want to be the central repository of all badges because that would just defeat the whole thing that we're going for. Yeah, so um, uh, again, roadmapped but not implemented yet is this idea of the backpacks continually pinging the issuers to confirm that the badge is still valid. Um, and also, it, in addition to that, there's like this idea of badge versioning is, is, a, is an issue, especially like for college professors, where if you, if you took a class in 2010, um, it's the same badge that you would earn in 2010 versus 2011, but like the, the curriculum has completely changed, so they want to distinguish between the two badges, and skills would have updated and things like that. A couple other features that we're gonna be building in at some point is this idea of um, uh, like badge expiration over time. So that like, you know, the badge is either more or less valid a year after it was issued, right? So like in one case, your skills may have become continually seasoned, right? So the badge should sort of like level up and present itself that way. Um, or uh, over time, your skills need to be updated so the badge should like slowly crumble. There's actually this really cool um, group at, um, it's a, uh, shoot, they're in Maine. They're at, I can't, I think, can't remember if it's University of Maine or what, but they're in Maine. They have like uh, a really interesting badge system that uses squares instead of circles. This is a big plus. Um, and it also has like, a, it just embed, they embed a ton of graphical information in the badges. Like they're design oriented folks. And they've come up with a really neat way. And they, they were the first ones that, like, we knew that this idea of badge expiration over time would be something. But they're actually showing it by, like, the badge slowly crumbling and fading into nothing. It's, like, it's the, the coolest. I mean, it's really, it, yeah, anyways. Um, okay, so let's say that you've now, you've now issued a badge in your system. And you want to allow the user to pull the badge into their backpack. Uh, we've created a really, really basic API um, that handles all the pop-ups and everything for you. All you have to do is include our, our JS script um, from whatever backpack, and we are going to figure out how to like include it from one backpack, but then allow the user to push their badge into whatever backpack they want. Um, and then, uh, well, this is all cut off, sorry folks, but, but it's just a simple call, so you, know, you can attach it with an with a event handler sort of deal. Um, this is all written in JavaScript, by the way. The server component is completely in Node. We're using Express um, as a web framework. And then just a bunch of other Node libraries. <clears throat> it's backed by MySQL. Um, and as sort of a, as an incentive to contribute to the project, like we're also um, spinning off a lot of sub-projects from it. So we're already close to spinning off a, a MySQL ORM written in Node. Um, a router, uh, like a URL router written in, in Node that like, builds on the existing Express stuff, but like extends it in a lot of positive ways. Um, and of course, like Mozilla builds in time into the project to allow you know, people to sort of do this stuff. But if you're interested in contributing, you know, Node is sexy and cool and awesome and you know, everybody loves it, right? Um, and plus, like, there's going to be a bunch of sub-projects that if you're not necessarily interested in, in contributing to the badges portion of it, like, you know, there's other ways to contribute, including, like, some of the cryptography stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, there's this optional step, which uh, a lot of places are doing, and I think it's a good idea to bake the badge, which, which takes, all that, um, takes all that metadata and actually puts it into the ping, like, into the meta top area of the ping. Um, which makes it super portable. Then you can like download it and email it to somebody, um, and then the person can verify it with tools. Like they can upload it and check out all the metadata. The the verification tool doesn't actually exist, but <laughs> but it's relatively trivial to implement, and we will have something at some point. Uh, and then this is the stuff that did. I mean, it's it's in staging um, as of like three o'clock, um, and it'll be at beta.openbadges.org. Uh, probably this Friday, um, but it's the displayer API, so it's just a real simple JSON read-only API that if somebody agree, you have to make your, your badges are private by default in the existing backpack. You can make them public, and then with this API, grab a bunch of JSON data about it, and we're looking for people to build 
widgets based on the, the API. It's pretty simple. Um, and we want them to be pretty. So hopefully you can do pretty things. The future. I think I said just everything in here already because you guys are really smart and you came up with all of the areas that we need to work on. Um, but yeah, federated backpacks, uh, signed issuers, like both, like being able to cryptographically un agree that yes, the person who issued the badge is the person who issued the badge and all that jazz. Um, better display wa widgets, wadgets, that's cooler than a widget. Um, and then this whole Open Badger thing. So Open Badger, there's not a line of code committed to it yet. It's really just sort of like a gleam in our eye. Um, we do have an ANSI or an ASCII art graphic for it, which is like 90% of the battle. Um, but it, it is a good way to get involved if you're interested. Um, the API, whoa. Yeah, so how you can get involved. We are, we're on GitHub. If you haven't been to github.com slash Mozilla, I would encourage you to. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I asked that loaded question in the last thing about uh, what do you think about HTML5 gaming, largely because like, if you go to Mozilla, there's a ton of, did everybody play that browser quest this week that came out? Yeah. So it's, it's there, like all the source code is there. Um, there's a project up there called Gladius that is um, trying to build a, a um, 3D game engine, including like joystick stick support and, and sound support all in the browser. It's really kind of amazing stuff. Um, and then there's open badges, equally amazing, not in 3D, um, but is on Node, so we get bonus points for that. Um, and yeah, we, we have had uh, uh, some contributions from the community, but we would really like some more. And, and we're also hiring, too. Like, I would much rather build this thing with, um, with a lot of community support. So. Uh, but if you're interested in a job, you can talk to me about that, too, because we do have those as well. And the end. All photos were by me. Yes. Yeah, um, what, would, what would be involved with, with setting yourself up as a badge issuer? It's literally just... Um, uh, the, uh, this. So you just, you have a badge, like a picture, you create that criteria URL, um, and then you're able to create an assertion for everybody that earns that badge. So it's like a one-to-one -one relationship of uh, somebody who earned a badge, they get a, an assertion that's unique to them. Um, and then you just push it, you allow the user to pull the badge into the system here. So if you um, write down this uh, bit.ly here. That was a guitar solo. Uh, bit.ly slash McAvoy badges. The, that's the link to those three articles. This one, uh, earn a badge, issue a badge, goes into more detail about how to integrate. But the, the, the secret is, is that you really like create your own badges and then you allow them to push it into the backpack. And then with Open Badger, we'll give you better tools to actually create the badges. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the question was, um, we're not going far enough to decentralize education. I totally agree. I mean, seriously, like I, I, I er, everything you said was dead on. I mean, e even, even if you're getting a digital badge from MIT, you're still relying on this like monolithic 200 year old organization to, to verify that you know what you say you know. Um, 
So yes. Next question. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree. I, but I, the, the only thing I would say is that this is not, um, we're not trying to, we're, we're not going to fix education with open badges. We're just, we're, we're, we're building the tools to make sure that other people can fix education either with or without badges. There's also, I mean, there is, an, there is a specific anti-badge component or contingent in the world like that, that do believe that the badges are encouraging the wrong thing, that you'll just like spend all your time gathering badges and you're not really learning anything and that you should, that education should be purely intrinsically motivated um, and that you should just feel the rewards internally. I agree with those guys too. Um, Scratch, like from MIT Labs, um, the folks there are definitely like in the camp of, we don't want to badge the sorts of activities that we want to see people doing. We want to encourage them and then give them an open field to play in. I think it's a totally valid. I mean, it's like, you know, education is, is, is not, it, for, for a lot of good reasons, isn't easy to boil down to a particular philosophy of how to do it right. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree. Christopher. Let me, go, let me go back to the, the fuzzy question for just one second. But the thing that I will say, right, is that like, um, that even though I do agree, I think that like, I, there's a book um, called, um, shoot, everybody knows it. As soon as I say it, it was like, oh yeah, I read that. Or I read the jacket cover of it. The um, reality is broken. That, you know, like people are trying to gamify public education and, and private schools and, um, just like gamification as like a tremendously rewarding thing. I know gamification is a totally loaded bullshit term, but just bear with me for a second. Um, uh, and that the positive effects of it far outweigh the potential negative effects. And like it's a, it's, you know, it's like one path towards it. And I think that badges are like often cited as a tool in this sort of gamification toolkit. Um, yeah, so they're coming, like it's happening. And I think that there's a lot of positives that you can take from it. And it's possible that the sorts of rewards that you get from it are actually uh, more positive than we give them credit for initially. But, um, but yeah, we just, you, you, you want to build the system so that it's not controlled by the bad guys, it's controlled by the good guys. Anyways, Christopher, carry on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. I told you, yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I told you, yes, absolutely. And, and that's, um, I, you know, that's, that one of the, con so the question was like, what if, just to summarize, like what if the issuer, what if the person who issues the badge goes away? We have so many assets that tie back to the issuer as proof that of the validity of the badge, like what if they go away? And yes, cryptography will definitely push us in, in the right direction that will allow that sort of thing. We have, we, um, the specific thing that we're trying to fix right now in the next three months is this idea, um, over the summer, the foundation is gonna sponsor a series of kitchen table events um, where we're encouraging families and small groups and friends to sort of like get together and teach each other how to do HTML stuff based on like a relatively simple curriculum. Because we wanna make, one of the, the big goals of the foundation right now is to make everybody a web maker instead of a web consumer, right? And so we're, we're going for lowest common sort of like HTML, CSS, a little bit of JavaScript sort of thing. Um, but because the events are pop-up, like how do, we, how do we award badges without necessarily having to host the assertions forever in perpetuity? And so, yeah, there's, we're, we're, that dude with the big hair is thinking about it an awful lot. I'm thinking about it an awful lot. And it's coming. And I do think that the cryptography piece is going to be the key to it. Yes. Mm 
-hmm. Yes, and I should have included it on the roadmap. So the question is, um, like, how, how does reputation play into it? Is there the idea of a graph-based badge system? So yes, um, there's, we're also working on uh, an endorser API. So like, given a particular badge, um, like let's say to use the big like brick building um, issuers, like if MIT creates a badge, um, the Smithsonian and NASA and blah, blah, blah could endorse that badge as being something that they, they agree is, is a thing that exists and is good. Oh, that's, ah, oh, man. I forgot to put in, in a slide about like the DML winners. So like in addition to, to that being at that cool like biosphere thing, like there's a ton of really interesting organizations that, that were awarded grants by the MacArthur Foundation as part of the DML. So like NASA got one, um, the Smithsonian got one, um, just a bunch. I put a bunch on my blog and I linked to the full list, but there's gonna be a, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of neat things going on in the space in a lot of different areas, but a lot of citizen science projects too. And we're trying to encourage like more, more of these to do it. And it actually, I saw like a small cheer in the back, but like um, if you think of citizen science as a slightly like less D and D sort of idea, but like, so I do participate in some of these projects that like, um, and I'm not very good at them yet. I just started, but like you can take a picture of like, let's see, you, you see a penguin walking down the street. You can take a picture of it on project Noah and like put it up there, you wanna know more about the penguin, other people can contribute to it, and then you sort of like are adding to the, the body of knowledge of penguin behavior. Um, uh, people on that, on that board are, are, some people are like verified as being able to identify penguins or penguin experts. It's a perfect badgeable sort of thing. Another example that we've been using for social sciences is the barn stars in Wikipedia. Um, like if you're a particularly good Wikipedia editor, you can get a barn star. Um, I would really like to see them make those uh, OBI compliant so that people can push them around and do all that stuff. But anywho, okay, Tim, we'll talk afterwards. Thank you everybody. Please do contribute. <laughs>